Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 6 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 5, we have understood what chemical equilibrium is. We have understood that when you have reactants like A and B and they result in the formation of product C and D, an equilibrium is established when this is a reversible reaction. And at equilibrium, the rate of the forward and the backward reactions are equal. And at that point, although it is a very dynamic state, it's a very active state, the concentrations of the reactants and the products, they become constant. Now, the next question is that if these concentrations, they become constant, is there a relationship between the concentrations of the reactants and the products? If there is, what is this relationship? The second question that comes to mind is that we say that at equilibrium, the concentrations, they become constant. If they become constant, is it possible that even before we actually perform the, the reaction, we know what would the concentration of the reactants and the products be at equilibrium? Is it possible to know beforehand? And if we know beforehand what the equilibrium concentrations are going to be, then the next question is, is it possible to manipulate those concentrations? Is it possible that if you at equilibrium, this is the concentration of the products and this is the concentration of the reactants. Is it possible that we change the conditions or the concentrations of the reactants in such a way that if we want more product, the equilibrium should be established more towards the product side? Is it possible to manipulate them? That is the aim of studying chemical equilibrium actually, to reach the manipulation, to be able to get the yield that you want industrially and in the laboratory when we are working. So this study was carried out by two Norwegian scientists. They were Kato Macmillan Gulberg and Peter Wage. These two scientists, they found out a relationship between the concentrations of the reactants and the products. And what was this relationship that they found out? If the reaction is A plus B gives us C plus D, this is a reversible reaction and it is at equilibrium, then they said that there is an equilibrium constant in terms of concentrations. The equilibrium constant in terms of concentration is written as KC. C stands for concentrations. And K is the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration. And the relationship they gave was that if you have the, the product of the concentrations of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants, the product of the concentration of the reactants, these should be constant. This was a relationship that was given by Goldberg and Wage. It is understandable, you know, not too much of um, work must have gone into this. When we say that the concentrations, they become constant, obviously when you have two constant numbers, their ratio should be constant. So at equilibrium, the concentrations, the product of the concentrations of the products divided by the product of the concentration of the reactants should be constant. And that was known as the equilibrium constant. And this entire e expression is known as the equilibrium constant expression. And it is also known as the law of mass action. Now, what is the reason for calling it mass action? Do you know, earlier, at earlier times, the concentration was not called concentration. It was called active mass. And that's the reason why it was, this was also known as the law of mass action, because at that time it was dependent, it was the, an equilibrium constant based on the active masses of the reactants and the products which today we call concentrations of the reactants and products. Now, in order to explain the law of mass action or the equilibrium constant expression, uh, uh, an experiment was conducted using hydrogen and iodine to produce hydrogen iodide. This is a reversible reaction and it was carried out at 731 Kelvin in a sealed vessel. If you remember, I told you that equilibrium, chemical equilibrium can be established only in a sealed vessel. That is when the system is, uh, is a closed system because in an open system, the reactant or the products may be lost, especially if they are gaseous to the surroundings and therefore equilibrium will not be established. Having understood this, let us see what was this experiment and how did it confirm the equilibrium equation. 
This experiment was carried out six times by scientists. And what did they do? They took different concentrations of hydrogen and iodine in the first four experiments, or they carried out the same reaction six times. In the first four attempts, they took hydrogen, the concentrations of hydrogen and iodine, they took different concentrations of hydrogen and iodine initially. And they waited for equilibrium to be established. When equilibrium was established, they measured the concentrations of hydrogen iodide, iodine and uh, hydrogen. That is the amount of iodine and hydrogen used up and uh, the amount of hydrogen iodide formed or the remaining concentrations of the reactants and the products, they could find out all three of them. So in the first four steps, using different concentrations, they, they found, they just measured, they just wrote down whatever their readings was, that this was the concentration of, the, of hydrogen, this was the concentration of iodine that we started with, at equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen was this, iodine was this, and HI was this. In the last two attempts, that is, they carried out the experiment four, uh, six times, I told you. In the first four attempts, they, had, they started with hydrogen and iodine. But in the last two attempts, they started with hydrogen iodide as the reactant. That is the reverse reaction. Because if you remember, equilibrium can be established from either direction. You can either start from the front and from reactants towards products, or the same equilibrium can be established under the same conditions from the product towards the reactants. So, in the fifth and sixth attempts, they started with hydrogen iodide. So they had initial concentration of hydride, hydrogen iodide and at equilibrium, the concentrations of hydrogen produced, iodine produced and hydrogen iodide left. After doing this, now why did they carry out these experiments? Because they wanted to find out a relationship between these concentrations and see, apply them to this equation. Now I will insert this uh, chart of this experiment, the experimental readings of these scientists right here in the video and you just observe the concentrations and then I'll explain uh, what did they understand from this experiment. So now that you have seen that the different concentrations of the, uh, of the different components during the experiment, let us understand what they saw. They said that in all of these at equilibrium, the concentrations of hydrogen were always equal to iodine. At equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen that was used up in the first four cases rather I would say, was equal to the concentration of iodine that was used up in the experiment. And the number of moles of iodine and hydrogen that were used up or that, they, that reacted was always equal to half of the concentration of hydrogen iodide that was formed. And you can understand that from this balanced chemical equation. If we have one mole of hydrogen and one mole of iodine, it results in the formation of two moles of hydrogen iodide. And this ratio was seen during equilibrium. That if, let us say, half a mole of hydrogen was used up, then this half a mole of hydrogen would be equal to the amount of iodine used up. Iodine would also be half a mole. And hydrogen iodide would then be would then be twice of this. So these concentrations are half of the amount of hydrogen, the number of moles of hydrogen iodide produced. This relationship was observed in those readings. I would ask you, I would urge you to move back to that table that I showed you and see what were the uh, concentrations. Then what else did they notice? That if Kc, we know, is equal to, for the first four uh, reactions we say, that if Kc is equal to Hi upon H2 into I2, that is what, that is what was shown to us by Goldberg and Wage, that whatever is the concentration of the product, divided by the concent product of the concentration of the reactants. When this was done and we got the readings, when we, from that table, we took the value of HI and we took the concentrations of H2 and I2. So we put HI on top and divided it by H2 and I2 and we got different readings for all the six experiments. But the problem was that when we got these different readings for the six experiments, they were, the readings were very different. And since we say that this is equilibrium constant, it's a constant value. 
it should be constant it sh you should not get different values so this showed that there was something wrong in this calculation if you just put the uh, concentration of hydrogen iodide and divided it by the concentration of hydrogen into concentration of iodine you would not arrive at the correct answer because a constant should have a constant value and we were not getting that so what correction was made the correction that was made was that if we calculate kc with a square of hydrogen iodide divided by H2 and I2, then we would get all, for all the six experiments, the value of Kc would be the same. Which means that this is right. Kc is a constant and you should get a constant value. Then, what does this 2 mean? Why did we add this 2? And why did we put Hi to the power of 2? If you look at the equation, 2 was actually the stoichiometric coefficient. So if you raise the power of whatever constituent it is to its stoichiometric coefficient, then you get a constant value of the, uh, of the equilibrium constant. So this is the correct equation. So this gave us the law of chemical equilibrium. After having understood this, we got the law of chemical equilibrium. What is the law of chemical equilibrium? Now let us take this equation and understand it from this. Now if looking at this, if we have an equation now with stoichiometric coefficients, A moles of A, B moles of B react to produce C moles of C and D moles of D. Then how would you write the equilibrium constant? Equilibrium constant would be equal to concentration of products, product of concentration of products. So Concentration of C raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. Concentration of product, product of concentration. So we are finding out the product of both the concentrations raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients divided by product of the concentrations of the reactants raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients. That is what is written here. At a given temperature, the product of concentration, the product of the concentration of reaction products raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced equation divided by the product of the concentrations of the reactants raised to their individual stoichiometric coefficient and this value is constant which is known as the equilibrium constant and this is known as the law of chemical equilibrium that what what would the law be that these values are constant at equilibrium, the, the product of the concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by or the ratio of the uh, the ratio of the product of the concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients to the concentrations of the product of reactants raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficients is constant. This is the law of chemical equilibrium. Now, if we look at this equation, 4NH3 plus, I'm, I'm ignoring the physical states, 4NH3 plus 5O2 gives you 4NO plus 6H2. This is a reversible change and at equilibrium, what, what would be the expression for equilibrium constant, constant, uh, constant? It would be concentration of products, NO, to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient 4 into concentration of H2O to the power of 6 divided by the concentration of reactant NH3 to the power of stoichiometric coefficient 4 into concentration of oxygen raised to the power of 5. Now this is really important when you solve your numerical problems but because you will be given the concentrations of these reactants and products and looking at the balanced chemical equation you would have to raise those values to the powers of those stoichiometric coefficients and then calculate your answer. Now there is a little more understanding that you have to do. I told you that equilibrium can be established from both directions. So we know that if the equation is this, AA plus BB gives you CC plus DD, then KC is the equilibrium constant and you already know how KC is calculated, right? If we were carrying the reaction from the reverse direction, that is if the products were, we started with the products, 
then the products become the reactants. So the products become the reactants and therefore the reaction becomes CC plus DD gives you AA plus BB. What would be the equilibrium cons uh, constant of this? It would be concentrations of AA, A to the power A into B to the power B divided by C to the power C and D to the power D. Isn't it? It would be the inverse of this equation. It would be the inverse of KC. Therefore, we can call it K dash C. That is, K dash C would be equilibrium constant for reverse reaction. K dash C would then be the equilibrium constant for reverse reaction would be the inverse of equilibrium constant for forward reaction. And the third variation that is possible is that let us say that you have an equation and the entire equation is multiplied by a certain number. Now, when you multiply that entire equation by a certain number, the entire, you remember, the stoichiometric coefficient becomes the power. So, if you multiply the entire equation by a number, whatever equilibrium constant you got initially, you should raise it to the power of that number in order to get the equilibrium constant. Because after all, whatever you're multiplying it with, multiplying all the terms with, would actually be the stoichiometric coefficient and a multiplication to the stoichiometric coefficient. For example, if I have AA plus BB will give us CC plus DD and I multiply this by N. If I multiply this equation by N and all of them will be multiplied by N and that is what is shown here. NAA plus NBB gives us NCC plus NDB. It is actually the same equation. But we have multiplied all the reactants and products by a certain number. So the stoichiometric coefficient changes. So whatever was the initial value of Kc, you will have to raise it to the power of n because now the n is also the stoichiometric coefficient. Therefore, you have to raise it to the power of n to get the value of K double dash C. So this was how to, uh, what is the law of chemical equilibrium and what is uh, equilibrium constant. Let us now solve two numerical, simple numerical problems, the solved examples to understand this better. Give me a minute. Now this is question 7.1. It is the solved example of your NCRT textbook exercise. Let us discuss this. These are just simply uh, very simple numerical problems to understand the equilibrium constant. The following concentrations were obtained for the formation of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen at equilibrium at 500 Kelvin. The concentrations are given to us nitrogen, hydrogen, ammonia. You have to calculate the equilibrium constant. In order to do this, you must have the chemical equation because what is the equilibrium constant equation? That you will write down the concentrations, the product of the concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So to get the stoichiometric coefficients, you must always have the balanced chemical equation. So what is the equation for formation of ammonia? You have N2 plus 3H2 gives you twice NH3. I'm not writing the physical states. All of them are gaseous. Okay. So this is the equation that we start with. And so what is Kc? Kc would be equal to the concentration of the product that is ammonia, NH3, concentration of ammonia raised to its stoichiometric coefficient is 2, divided by the concentration of nitrogen raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, which is 1, therefore we write nothing, and hydrogen, concentration of hydrogen raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, 3. Now, if we write down, substitute the values of these concentrations now, what is the concentration of ammonia? It is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 2. So, we write 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 2. These are all molar. Do you see the capital M is for the concentration of the solution? It means it is these many moles in a liter of the solution. So, we'll, we'll again, we can ignore the um, units because it's a ratio of the units and the units would as it is be cancelled out. So you have 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 2 raised to the power of 2 divided by what is the concentration of N2 nitrogen? N2 is given to us is 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 is the concentration of nitrogen. N2 we have to write down the concentration of uh, hydrogen. It is 3 into 3.0 into 10 to the power minus 2 
but what is the stoichiometric coefficient here? 3. So you raise it to the power of 3. Now how many 10 to the power minus 2? You should have the same value of the exponent of 10 so that they can be cancelled out. So how many 10 to the power minus 2 you have on in the numerator? 2. And in the denominator you have 4. So ultimately when you solve this the 10 to the power minus 2 you will have this equal to 1.2 into 1.2 because it's to the power of 2 divided by 1.5 into 3.0 into 3.0 into 3.0 into, into 10 to the power minus 4 because 10 to the power minus 2 into 10 to the power you have 4 10, 10 to the powers minus 2 in the denominator and only 2. So you'll be left with 2 which becomes 10 to the power minus 4. This will come on top. So therefore this will become whatever answer you get. It would be into 10 to the power 10 to the power 4 into 10 to the power 4. And when you solve this part you will get this would be equal to 0 0.106. This would be 0 0.106 into 10 to the power 4 would be the value and if you write it in scientific notation you will have to shift the decimal towards the right to have one non-zero digit before the decimal so this would be equal to 1.06 into 10 to the power 3 right so this would be the value of kc now one more question here the question is at equilibrium the concentrations of nitrogen are 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 uh, molar equation uh, molar solution that is moles per liter oxygen is 4.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar and no is equal to 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar in a sealed vessel at 800 kelvin what will be the well, what will be kc for this reaction and the equation is given to you so this is even simpler the equation is already given to you all you have to do is write down kc so Kc we know would be equal to concentration of product NO, concentration of NO to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient 2 divided by N2 stoichiometric coefficient is 1 so nothing into oxygen stoichiometric coefficient is 1 so nothing. Substitute the values it would be NO is how much 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 raised to the power of 2 and divided by 4.2 into sorry 4.2 is oxygen and I'm writing nitrogen now divided by the concentration of nitrogen given is 3.0 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar now n2 they are they are to the powers of 1 so we just write them into what is the concentration of oxygen now is 4.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar now how many if you just leave this part and the 10 those exponential parts of 10 you have 10 to the power minus 3 two times in the numerator and two times in the denominator therefore this gets cancelled out right so you're left with this part which is 2.8 upon 3.0 into 4.2 2.8 will be twice into 2 point it's power to the power of 2 and when you solve this you will come to the value 0.622 right so all you have to do is put down put in the values of the concentrations raise them to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficient find out the ratio and you get kc so this is how you find out the equilibrium constant if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now